Good morning. It's a beautiful day. I'm Ken and you're watching OK Portugal. It's autumn and all the leaves are turning beautiful shades of oranges and reds. And the farm is peaceful and quiet, but all that is about to change. Joaquin's on his way with his trusty Ford tractor and we're going to get things ready for the growing season. This preparation work started a couple of weeks ago when Joaquin was here with his tractors and his tiller and basically got the ground to this state. And the reason why we do this is to break up all of the root bundles and to basically mix all of the grasses and everything that have been growing over the summertime that have been left here and get them into the soil so that we can have a nice seed bed to plant in. So it looks like he's back with the same tool again. On the back of the tractor he has a disc harrow which basically tills the soil. Now as you can see he's going this way. When he did it originally he went lengthways. So I'm guessing this is going to help get things a lot finer. And you can see from the previous till we've got these large pieces left over and uh, now that he's going in the upper direction you can see things are looking a lot finer so it definitely works Bon dia Joaquin! <laughs> yeah we can see the thing in action straight after it's done things look a little bit drastic but uh, they won't be like that for long as we can see on this field next door which was only done a couple of weeks ago and you can see how it's already greened up it's looking fantastic i'm really looking forward to the springtime when all of these fields are going to look completely different and uh, this is just the very beginning stage of that and one of the best parts about spring is that the grasses are so high that you don't actually see any of the fence lines anymore it just you have this wide open spaces that look like they have absolutely no fences and all of the farms kind of join into each other I seem to have a habit of uh, always jumping ahead and not really enjoying the moment like you know when it's uh, springtime I can't wait until the summer when it's like autumn time I can't wait until the spring and then you know it just kind of keeps repeating and cycling itself but I think this year is going to be different because I'm actually quite looking forward to having a little bit of winter and in our last video we got air conditioning system installed inside our farmhouse over there and uh, I think it's going to make a massive difference to our lives. For the last week we've had temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius, which I guess in some places is quite hot, but after the summers that we have here of 40 degrees plus, uh, we haven't really felt the need to even put the aircon on much. I think we've had it on a couple of times, it works really well, but what I'm really looking forward to is having it on in the winter when we can use the heating part of it, because uh, that is going to be a complete game changer for us. Now I'm not entirely sure if this is the only job that's going to be done today, if it's going to be this uh, disc harrow. Um, it seems to be going through the ground really quickly because obviously all this was chopped up about two weeks ago. So it's taking him a lot less time, but I'm not entirely sure. I think the time now is about 11 o'clock. We've got two hours. He's obviously got to do these fields here, the field over there, the field over there, and then the big one on the back. There's something awesome about seeing a tractor on your land plowing through the soil and uh, getting things ready. I love it. I still haven't tackled our vineyard. Uh, I've got quite a lot of tidying up and mowing and stuff to do. But I think I'm going to wait until these leaves drop off because there's not really much point coming in here and tidying everything up when we've got all of the stuff to basically fall down. But as you can see, it's in a, a big old mess. We've got like about three days left until it rains. I think it's going to rain on Saturday. And uh, yeah. I'm hoping that that's going to change things a little bit. It's going to be the end of this little Indian summer sort of heat wave that, that we've had here right in the beginning of autumn. And uh, well, I think that's when all of these leaves are going to come down. This summer was pretty harsh in terms of like water. I mean, this is probably like the lowest levels that we've ever seen water wise on our farm. Uh, but I'm not really that worried anymore. Obviously, we've we've hit autumn. The rains are going to be coming. And uh, but anyway, I want to show you what it looks like. This is the sort of agricultural irrigation well, um, and it's actually not looking too bad. For the last month and a half, two months, it's actually been at exactly the same level. What we do is we count the bricks, and on the brick line where where it currently is, it's only dropped about I would say about three four centimeters. So that's not too bad. And if we look at from ground level, which is just over there where the black pipe is, it's only going down about four meters. And this well is eight meters deep. So we're actually only half empty, which is pretty awesome. I mean, obviously every 
you know, every summer you get worried about water. You know, you start thinking, geez, so my well's going to run dry or anything like that. This is now, we're going into our fourth year of owning this place. And I think for the last five years, I think it's been about five years, Portugal's been in drought. Like, so, you know, the mere fact that we've still got half of our water left in our wells at the very end of summer and the beginning of autumn, just before the rains, is, is pretty good. But I must say, like every summer I do get worried, you know, especially when 40 degree heat starts to hit and the land just looks completely different. Everything is so dry and you just think to yourself, what if I ever ran out of water? It would be an absolute nightmare. At some stage we want to look at getting a borehole done. Now I know um, off in the distance about a kilometer away where the closest residential house is, they've got a borehole and uh, there's another person with a borehole all the way at the end of our road which is about another, I'd say about another 700 meters in that direction. So I think what I'll do is find out from them uh, what depth their borehole is and then I can get an idea of what it will cost for us to get a borehole. You know, that wouldn't be something that we would use for irrigating or anything, but it would be something to make sure that we always have water in the house. You know, in 5, 10, 15 years time, if water becomes a real problem. And I'm guessing if you look at that house over there, well you can't actually see it. And then where they have the borehole about 700 meters away, there's probably an aquifer underneath here that they have to tap into. And if that's the same aquifer that they have to drill deep into the rock to get to that water, then it should give us an idea of exactly what the depth is and the price of a borehole is basically dependent on how deep they have to dig and how many holes they have to dig because they could potentially come here they could start digging or drilling and uh, not well not hit water and then have to reset and go somewhere else and i think the going rate for each hole is about three thousand euros but i mean that all depends on the depth that's if you're going like 50 meters or something like that now i'm not entirely sure these figures were from people that i spoke to about four years ago so chances are prices have gone up um, and you know depending on whether these guys say that it's 100 meters deep or whatever then you can multiply that and get an idea of what it's going to cost so a big investment for us it's actually amazing you can see the leaves are starting to come back on the vines now these were actually um, all the leaves got eaten off by Joaquin sheep and uh, we've had this kind of Indian summer weather and now look all of the leaves are back the vines think that it's spring again <laughs> incredible As I've said in other videos, it seems that whenever the ground is tilled, whenever the fields get worked, that's when all of the flies come out and we get tons and tons and tons. This is why I've got this hat on, because when you have your hair short like this and they land on top of it, it's like a cat's whisker, you know, like cat's whiskers where it's like really sensitive and it's really annoying, uh, especially if you're trying to film and hold like a camera still. Now he's finished the front field, but I'm not sure exactly how much of this I'm going to be able to film today because we've obviously got all of these spaces here and all the way along there. As I said earlier, we've got spaces all the way down the back there. In only a couple of hours, I've got to go and shoot a property video. It's a private property video for a client, uh, Anne. Hello, Anne, if you're watching. And uh, so, yeah, I've got to get my stuff ready. I've got to make sure that I have all of my cameras charged and drones and everything like that. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to film um, all of the fields getting done today. Hello, little chicken. What are you doing all the way out here on your own? This is another one of our free ranging chickens. She's a really friendly one. This is actually a chicken that you can just walk up to and pick up. Although I can't do it now because I've got a camera in my hand. But she's, she, she's very chilled. But she seems very far away from the rest of her flock. Right now that the tractor's out, we have the dogs locked up because our dogs are silly and they'll probably run in front of the thing. So um, they're not out here at the moment to look after the chickens. But I think we should be all right from foxes and stuff because we've got a lot of noise happening with the tractor and stuff. But anyway, this little chicken needs to watch out. He's got to be careful. You've got no, no dogs to protect you, girl. Get back to the rooster. This is one of my favorite views, seeing the forest in the background and seeing Joaquin on his tractor coming past. So awesome. I think that's a view that's going to be ingrained in my memory for, well, until the end of my days. This place has been one huge place of just making the most amazing memories. And I can't believe it's almost been four years. It's incredible it's almost well it's just less than a tenth of my life that I've actually spent here on this farm so a couple of weeks ago I was talking about how we were going to put a fence through here and up to about this point and pretty much all the way along here we were going to have this fence so that we could keep our dog in and I'm really glad that it hasn't actually happened because uh, I mean this view would have been completely interrupted by a big ugly fence running through here I mean that's the last thing that you want um, we've had a couple of quotes 
uh, one of the guys wanted to put up this fence. It was two meters tall because um, we need something to stop our Cerrado Australia dog from getting out. Um, but the fence wouldn't have been two meters tall. It would have gone up to about, about I think to about my sort of chin height or whatever. So to about one meter six because 40 centimeters of it was going to be dug into the ground so that he can't dig out. I'm not sure if you can see, but like around the perimeter here, we've got regular sheep fencing. And for a dog, it's not the best stuff. But I think what we're going to do, um, I spoke to Joaquin, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to put up a regular sort of sheep fence. It only goes up about four foot high or 120 centimeters high. And uh, it's going to look a lot more sort of farmy. It's not going to look like this fence that they were going to give us. That was, I don't know, it's like a metal fence with um, metal poles and the bottom of the fence. It wasn't actually dug into the ground. I misunderstood. It was actually lying flat on the ground, which would have been a real problem. Like imagine if I have to come along here with the mower and I have to mow over what's essentially just a fence lying along the ground. It's going to get caught up in the blades and stuff like that. So yeah, the fence has been put on hold. I'm not sure exactly. Joaquin says he's going to speak to a guy in the village and uh, see if he can put up some sheep fencing and hopefully that'll just be a little barrier to stop Eddie from getting out. Um, Jean is going to the UK. She's got a family wedding. Um, there's one of her family members is getting married. And uh, so I'm going to be here on my own. And uh, Eddie, our Serie d'Australia, is just like every time you let him out, um, he is always at the very edge of the boundaries of the farm. So he's either like all the way down there and you can't hear him, you can't see him. And if you see something like a fox or a badger or a, a little deer or something like that, he's going to chase after it. And then he ends up like fields and fields and fields away. So it's a real pain. When I think about the four years that I've been here, it doesn't really feel like it. It feels a lot less. Um, you know, as I said earlier, it's like almost a tenth of my life that I've been here. I can't even remember who I was or what I was thinking before I got here. I mean, I do know that I was, I was really miserable. Um, you know, I was just like in that whole work, sleep, work, sleep, um, basically living from paycheck to paycheck and the future didn't look great. You know, this was before Brexit. This is before a whole bunch of stuff has happened in the sort of world, you know, like COVID and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just had to find a way out. And so for the last year before I moved to Portugal, for that year, uh, I made sure that I gave myself a lot of challenges. I was pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Uh, I think I'd been doing a lot of running for about three years prior to that. And running to me was one way, I mean, I hate running. And it was a way to push myself into the most uncomfortable position and stay there for as long as I possibly could, um, which basically makes you mentally tough it also makes you quite fit physically and you know I did all of these things so that if I moved to Portugal and things got really tough and really really hard then I could deal with them you know and it worked it worked really well uh, the only thing is is that when I moved to Portugal I stopped all of those sort of healthy habits it was I think running I stopped because we moved into this beautiful sort of mountain house it was um, on the Cerro de Estrela mountains we were 800 meters up and when you walked out the front door of the house, it was like basically on this incredibly steep hill. And so I just wasn't able to run because you're either running down a hill, which is like, you know, especially if it's a really steep hill, it's, it's really bad for your knees. And then when you try and run back up the hill, I mean, you're practically going up at like a 15 degree angle or, you know, or steeper. So I kind of stopped running and I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up again. And then we bought our farm and uh, it was like the middle of winter. It was raining nonstop. And I was like, okay, well, I'll wait until the, the spring. And then the spring came and uh, I started running again. But as soon as the summer hit and we started hitting like 40 degrees Celsius, then I was like, okay, I'll wait till the autumn. And before you know it, you kind of snap out of those habits. So yeah, I think it's time that I get back into those healthy habits. I think it's time that I start to challenge myself again and start to push myself again. And um, it's all very easy to say all of that. It's all quite comfortable as I sit here, but obviously doing it and putting those things into motion in your life, are quite difficult but I know what those benefits are I know how much it changed my life when I did that before and how much it changed my life for the better and so yeah I really do need to start getting my act together again I've been enjoying the life here it's absolutely fantastic but I think as humans we aren't supposed to be super comfortable I don't think we're supposed to always you know have things go well I think we need that adversity and we need those challenges and it's the same in nature how the seasons change and the leaves all shrivel up and fall off. How you have to break up the soil 
and get rid of all those old root bundles and bring it back to its basics so that things can grow. It can't always be summer, it can't always be perfect and things have to change. So in last week's video I told you about this chicken who's been sitting on eggs. Now she's in the corner here, we've built this little barricade so she can get out um, and we've put this wire up so that the geese can't get in and uh, yeah basically at night time the geese are locked up in here the chickens all go in there and she's obviously sitting on the eggs and then in the morning when the geese see her they were attacking her so she's kind of barricaded in here she's quite happy she's sitting on I don't even know I mean like believe me there are a stack of eggs underneath her and uh, she's been there for a couple of weeks now so hopefully he's not firing blanks but what I've done is I've taken this piece over here it's some fencing and this is something that Gina actually built um, this actually went on the other side we have another room on this side over here and that's where we originally had our chickens before when we had baby chicks so what we're going to do I think is we're going to move her from there into this area and then when the chicks are born they've got this whole area here where they can use as a little pen and we'll put some food in here and we'll put water in here um, and then hopefully it's going to keep them safe because at night time when the geese are in here when they wake up in the morning they might start attacking the baby chicks so yeah i'm not going to set that up right now uh, but yeah, we have a solution for our chicky chicky problem and that is of course if Rui our rooster isn't firing blanks and we actually get some chicks because she's been sitting on those now for a couple of weeks and there's no action yet so earlier i was talking about how you know the fence hasn't happened etc etc well guess what joaquin arranged to have one of the guys that helps him on his farm uh, he's a guy that does fencing to come around and uh, he's basically just measured up and stuff uh, he's looking at doing a 1.5 meter high or five foot high uh, sheep fencing it's um, the extra strong stuff it's going to have wooden posts and uh, yeah he's he's basically given me a list of all of the materials we're going to put a little gate in here so we can access the field and if i spin this round we're going to have another gate down here by the barn so we can access the olive grove and then of course we have this outdoor kitchen area or carport area if we move the car out here we can still get like tractors and cars into this main sort of garden area so i might actually get a fence here to keep eddie in before gina goes to england and then i'm not going to be all on my own having to like track him through fields and stuff like that if he does run away it's always been a little bit of a, a worry for me you know and the last thing you want to do is like lock him up indoors when you've got a big beautiful farm for dogs to be dogs on i'm just walking down to the bottom field uh, Joaquin's already finished all of this area now and uh, yeah he's all the way down there the estate agent that I was going to meet today to do this property video has just has just phoned me to say that he needs to postpone it until tomorrow so I do actually have the rest of the afternoon to do a little bit more filming with Joaquin so let's go down there and have a look I know I say this a lot but it's incredible how much this farm changes and looks completely different through all of the seasons I mean you know we had absolutely no greenery or anything and then we had about a week of rain a couple of weeks back now we've just had all this heat again and we've still got a little bit of greenery it is a little bit dry and dusty but um, seeing all that's going to change saturday heralds the the end of this sort of heat wave i think the daytime temperatures are going to go down to about 20 degrees celsius we're going to have quite a lot of rain and um, at night time the temperatures are going to go down to about 10 degrees celsius there's going to be some days where it actually drops below that so for us that's going to be positively chilly and uh yeah things are going to look very very different very soon this is actually something i wish i had asked him before usually i like to keep this area here um just so you know where we've come from we've come sort of from like the main area here through the gate and i kind of like to keep this area not plowed i like the ground to be nice and hard and for us to be able to grow like a regular lawn that i can mow and stuff the reason being i like to be able to put the camper van down here it's also a nice place to have like like if you have a little party or a little bra or something and you're away from the house um, in the springtime or in the winter when there's a nice day uh, if i keep this area sort of all flat then it means that you can get cars in and out here uh, or if you have friends who have camper vans then they can come and camp down here in this bottom field where they have all these beautiful views and stuff like that uh, but after you've plowed or well not plowed tilled should, should i say um, it makes it incredibly difficult for people to drive on this especially if the rains and stuff like that happen and as you can see you know it looks like this uh, oh well it's kind of tricky when you try and flatten this out yourself and you try and mow it and stuff and it's all lumpy uh, but yeah it's not the end of the world 
I think he's probably going to plant this all up, all the way up to the fence line. Maybe this year we just let this stay planted and we don't have that section. Yeah, I think out of all of the fields that needed another another tilling, this is definitely the one. You can see we've still got lots of big root bundles and things like that. Oh look, this is that plant I was talking about in last week's video. Datura uh, Moonflower. Someone actually commented on my video the other day and said that they have these in South Africa and they're called Mulpita. So yeah, this is that really toxic plant, the one that's full of dimethyltryptamine or DMT. Um, but yeah, don't mess with this, it'll kill you. So he's nearly done. He's going in completely the opposite direction to where he tilled the last time. And then uh, I think it's going to be lunchtime. I'm not sure if he's going to be coming back in the afternoon. I'm sure he'll tell me after he's finished. And then if he is, I'm guessing he's going to come back with uh, the seed spreader. We're going to get those seeds in the ground. It's going to rain on Saturday. And we'll hopefully get fields full of greenery again soon, which is going to be very exciting. Right, so Joaquin's not quite finished, but it's time for lunch. Vamos comer. Si, si, almoço. Almoço. Okay. Pois, uh, volto. Okay, obrigado. So it's going to be raining in a couple of days after Joaquin puts the seeds in the ground and he just told me a nice old Portuguese saying, which is... Semeia na, no pó e não tenhas dó. Semeia na, na lama, chora na cama. <laughs> very, very cool. All right, lunch is finished. And we're just going to take the dogs for a walk uh, before Joaquin comes back. This is the Serra de Estrela, the dog that we're getting the fence for. He's a big Portuguese breed of dog, and uh, they're like a, a livestock guardian dog, meant for sheep, they're up in the Serra de Estrela Mountains of Portugal, so they're like an ancient breed. And then this is our other one, Mimo, Mimosa. Mimo, hello. So we're just going to take them for a little bit of exercise, because they're going to be locked back in the house again for when Joaquin gets here, which is probably not going to be too long. And Gina's, Gina's not impressed, because she's going to have to make... <laughs> She's going to have to make her path again. I know. I was, I'd got to the point where I didn't need to wear wellies and I feel like I should have put my wellies on to do this because yeah. I'm going to have to, yeah. You're going to have sandy feet. Yeah. So this little section over here, um, <coughs> Gina does like her dog walk. She has like a, a set routine and uh, takes a while to flatten everything out after the tractor's been. And then in a couple of months time, well actually not a couple of months, probably, a, well yeah, a couple of months like, three, four months time, we're going to have grasses growing here that are going to be shoulder height and we're going to have Gina's little path cutting all the way through. So I'm quite happy that Joaquin's found someone to do the fence because we went to like third party people, you know, like fencing companies and stuff. And obviously the kind of money that they want to charge you is a lot more, you know. Um, he's got a guy that helps him with different jobs around the farm. Obviously this guy's quite experienced at building fences. Um, he also has Costa. Um, Costa is too old to do the work now, but he's done fencing his entire life. So he's got like 30, 40 years of fencing experience for farm fencing. So he had them both here. They sort of agreed on what materials were going to be used. And uh, and now we've got the list. We just have to buy all of the materials. Costa and was definitely uh, given his expert opinion on what was needed and what wasn't needed. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, Costa's awesome. You've probably seen him in some of our other videos from the past. Not so much this year, but mainly sort of the years before that, I yeah. think. All right. Ah. <laughs> I just, I just brained myself on this little wire coming past here. <laughs> Did this wire drop or something? Yeah, it's lower. Well, I think your hat's higher. Really. Yeah, yeah, and this, and this is a bit higher. So soon we're going to have, I don't know, like another sort of row of fencing going around the house. And then it means that these dogs can't just go running all the way out to the outer perimeters and cause trouble when joaquin has got his sheep on the farm. Gina wanted to mention that Eddie's definitely a lot better. I mean, I know there's people like, oh, you should just train your dog and, you know, all of this stuff. But at the, at the end of the day, we've got um, a big piece of land. He sees this all as his sort of property. So, you know, he's going to want to go out and he's going to want to investigate those perimeters. And he's going to want to scent mark. He's going to want to do all of that stuff because he's protecting our farm. That's what he's meant to do, you know. Yeah. And his training's going really well, but you have to be with him to do the training. And if he's a kilometre down the other end of the farm, yeah. you can't, you're not with him to do the training. So if the fence is closer, we can do the like border training much better and much more efficiently. Yeah, 
And uh, for us, it's also nice because it just means that when he's squeaking at five o'clock in the morning because he wants to go outside, we don't have to suddenly wake up. We can just open up the front door and he can run out and we don't have to worry about him chasing after a fox or a rabbit or something like that. It almost gives him more freedom. Although we're taking the space down, it'll give them more freedom. It will, yeah, yeah, definitely. And they're still going to have these walks. I mean, you know, they we... Are every day. Otherwise my paths won't get made. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And this is why I should have worn wellies. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So you're going to England in about a week? I'm going to my cousin's wedding. Getting married next weekend. Nice. Which is going to be very nice. Means I'll have clean feet for a week. That'll be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the downsides of, of living in this farmhouse, especially when you have indoor dogs, is they bring all sorts of stuff in. So you can sweep the floor, you can vacuum the floor, and it'll be clean for about five minutes. <laughs> Not even that long. And, uh, and they'll bring all sorts of things in, like grass and little pebbles and stones and sticks and all sorts of stuff. Sometimes even rats, dead rats that they chew on, which is disgusting. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to go somewhere. Like when, when I go to Lisbon and I stay in a hotel and it's like, you, you get out the shower and your feet aren't instantly getting covered. I know, it'll be nice. It'll be nice to see my family anyway, because it's been a while. I think it's been, like over a year since I've been back to England. Okay. So it's gonna be it's gonna be nice to see everybody. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and eat um, crumpets. That'll yeah. be nice. Yeah, and I've got um, a friend, an old friend from South Africa. He's he's gonna be visiting for a couple of days while um, while Gina's away. So I'm quite looking forward to that too. Yeah. Joaquin is just about to come back now. I don't know if you can see him on the camera. He should be just down there somewhere. And uh, I think he's asking if it's okay to come in with the dogs. I think he's saying he's going to the bottom field. Okay. Yeah, so let's go down to the bottom field first. He should have a completely different tool on his tractor now. This is the machine that sows the seeds. It's quite a cool looking thing. Hola, Joaquin. Si. Muito. So this is this machine that I was talking about. If we look in the top here, we've got all of the seeds and uh, I think he's just about to turn it on. And now we can see the little arm is going to start to move and spray all of the seeds out. So last year we had a mixture of wheat, oats and clover. Um, this year, what's that? This just looks like wheat, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I can't see any other mixtures in here at the moment, but it could just be that those seeds have spread so far that I can't see them. Okay, so Joachim's, um, he's just done this field over here. Uh, he's not going to do these now because it's actually getting quite late in the evening. He's got some other stuff to do. He says he's going to come back tomorrow and uh, yeah, I think he's going to do the rest of those. Now I'm not sure. Hopefully I'm going to get to see that because I do have a property video tomorrow. But uh, at least we've got the one field done. Ah, actually I spoke too soon. Hey dude, he's back. So he's got this over here which is basically going to mix up. It's going to mix up all of the soil and dig in the seeds. So yeah, so this is going to get done today and then I think he's saying tomorrow these fields across here and all the way back there are all going to get done. I just love this lighting right now. The sun's getting lower in the sky and uh, just look at that, the tractor coming through all that dust. Looks amazing. And as you can see it's done a really good job of covering up the seeds and we have a very soft substrate here where the seeds are covered. It's also got quite nice moisture in it as well, even though we've had about 10 days of really hot weather and no rain. This will be really good for propagating those seeds. So I think the moment of truth is nearly here. Um, I think he's done most of it, but he is a perfectionist, so I've got a feeling that he's probably going to like try and find some of the little spots that haven't quite been done properly which he usually does actually no it looks like he is on his way out all right muito obrigado Joaquim perfeito perfeito uh a sementes uh, aveio uh um aveia is away okay okay Nice. Okay. Now a uh, trigo, trevo, or just a. Uh, no, no, no. Veia is vain. Okay. Ah. Excellent.
Joaquim, como o vinho do Porto. Quanto mais velho, melhor. Ah, vinho do Porto? Quanto mais velho, Joaquim. Sim, é sim. Como o vinho do Porto. Quanto mais velho, melhor. <risos> okay. Tchau, Joaquim. Olá. Tchau. Tudo bem. Tudo bem. Amanhã, yeah, yeah. So when you do things properly like Joaquin, they look good. And this field's looking pretty amazing. We've had tilling going this way, we've had tilling going this way. We've had the seeds go down and now we've had something to cover up the seeds going in the other directions. And after those rains come on Saturday, the soil gets nice and damp. Those seeds are going to soften up, they're going to germinate. And in a couple of months, we're going to have green fields. And in a couple of months after that, we're going to have flowers and we're going to have, uh, like, did he say aveo? I think he said aveo, yeah. So we're going to have, it's like oats, like, uh, like a type of oats in the field, mixed in with different wildflowers. Those will get bailed up and go to his sheep so that his sheep have got a whole bunch of hay bales to munch on in the summer months. And so it's time for me to pack up and uh, go back into the house. I'm absolutely boiling hot. And uh, yeah. Let's start working on this footage. Let's try and see if I can get this video out for you on a Sunday.